Hi, this is the Tropical Tipper for Friday evening, August 21st. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for your location. We're continuing to track our two new storms, Tropical Depression 14 in the Western Caribbean and newly christened Tropical Storm Laura, which has attained winds strong enough to be called a tropical storm and thus now has a name. And we're going to start again with TD14, uh, starting with the Western system first. This is the zoomed in floater imagery. This is Mexico right here. This is Honduras down at the bottom and Cuba up at the very top. And what we've seen today is the development of a much tinier circulation within the broad wave envelope that we had yesterday. And we can see that spinning away right in here. It was much more obvious this morning before clouds covered it up. But if you look really closely, you'll see some low level clouds out of the west on this side. And we see easterly flow on the north side. Now this has been present for about 12 hours since the sun rose this morning. And we've been waiting all day to see whether this will generate more thunderstorm activity than it has so far and try to spin up and get a little stronger. So far that hasn't happened and we can tell it's not very strong because uh, it's not really tugging at the flow on the northwest quadrant very much. You would expect to see northeast wind here kind of wrapping around this but that's not really happening. All of the flow right here is out of the east or even the east southeast telling you that this has not changed much in strength during the day today. But as we look at the recon data, we do see that this is a closed circulation, so it is here, and it is small. And the danger with small circulations is that they can undergo intensity changes rather quickly compared to large circulations. So all it would take is a really healthy burst of deep convection over this, and we could see it intensify into a tropical storm and then gain some wind before it nears the Yucatan Peninsula. For now, maximum winds here are pretty light with the winds on the south and north side respectively at about 35 miles per hour at the surface at a maximum. And if we look at the slightly larger picture here, we'll see that this is moving uh, more or less northwest at the moment. We're expecting kind of a bend toward the left here, toward the northern Yucatan Peninsula. There's a little bit of a wave axis along the coastline of the Yucatan Peninsula, and that's what's also helping to drive some of this east-southeasterly wind into the coast, and then it turns northeasterly inland. And this is going to be riding along the eastern edge of that wave toward the northeastern Yucatan within what is now a slightly more moist envelope than it it's had. This system has historically struggled with dry air. It's now a little bit less hostile. We are not seeing very much evidence of collapsing thunderstorms today, but we have yet to see really good convective coverage over the center of circulation. So something is probably still not quite optimal there, but given enough time, we may see this finally look a little bit better overnight tonight and tomorrow morning. This is going to get very important though for the long-term forecast because this has limited time with which to become a more robust storm and that's because of this big trough that you can see over the Gulf of Mexico all of these clouds streaming southwest to northeast at the upper levels this is that big trough and this is starting the process of taking some of this moisture and pushing it northeastward out of TD14's vicinity and a weak circulation like this would not be able to survive very long if the entire region gets strung out and all the moisture is picked up and whisked away a stronger storm however would start wrapping some of this moisture in and hogging it to itself allowing it to survive for longer and remain strong so this has a limited time window before it starts to become too late for the system to get really strong in the Gulf of Mexico we can see this happen on the GFS model as an example and models have been pretty consistent on TD14 for the last couple of days at least through the weekend and near the northeast coast of Mexico. This is the mid-level relative humidity and wind plot showing the green moisture near where TD14 is now located at the surface which is about here on the model and you can see the mid-level flow from that upper level trough over the Gulf of Mexico beginning to pull some of this moisture away. Now as we go forward on the GFS, the GFS does not like TD14's chances of strengthening much so you see a 1006 millibar bar low here but it really doesn't do much and so you'll start to see all this moisture get progressively more and more strung out away from the system and we get this thinning area of cyclonic circulation and moisture which on the GFS just results in something that remains super weak as it moves in the Gulf as this continues to get strung out and sheared due to this trough to the west and so this really doesn't do much on the GFS 
uh, as it crosses the Gulf, perhaps getting another chance to develop in the Northwest Gulf once shear goes down a little bit because this trough to the west will erode over time. So eventually that shear may decrease slightly, but this really doesn't do much on the model. Now, we have seen some developments in other model guidance, such as the European, which now likes TD14's chances a little bit better. And this is probably because it develops a slightly more robust circulation during its approach to the Yucatan Peninsula on Friday evening. And I actually have the wrong run selected here, so I'll show you the most current one. It has a pretty robust circulation tomorrow morning, and then on Sunday morning, you can see it crossing over into the Gulf of Mexico, just a little bit stronger than the GFS, and that's enough to get it to tropical storm status on the European model over the Western Gulf. But again, we are going to be dealing with shear from this upper level trough, big southwesterly flow in the way. So even though it does develop a little more than the GFS does, it is probably not likely to be that strong given the environments that the models are currently showing over the Western Gulf at that time. That said, uh, some models like H. Wharf have occasionally been a lot stronger, and for that reason, the National Hurricane Center is still calling for hurricane intensity at some point crossing the Gulf. Right now, it doesn't appear the system is spinning up that quickly. That could change, but for the moment, it is not getting very strong very fast, and in my opinion, that limits its ability to fight the conditions it will be dealing with during this segment of its journey, and odds of it uh, attaining hurricane status may be decreasing a little bit. But for now, this is the forecast. We'll see how this goes. For the moment, we do have a tropical storm warning and hurricane watch for the northeast coast of Mexico, and we will probably see at least tropical storm force winds over 40 miles per hour in this region and flooding rain, though the primary impact with the potential for flash flooding probably outweighing the danger from wind for this storm. The long-term track here uh, is a little bit uncertain, and that's because we do have potential interaction with Laura, which will probably be coming in during the same time. And it's also very dependent on just how strong the storm is, as a stronger storm would move perhaps a little bit more toward the right than a weaker storm here. But right now the consensus is again, perhaps Texas or Louisiana. I wanna emphasize that it's, it's not impossible for this to come up into Louisiana, depending on how strong it gets. Uh, and this cone may shift around over the next couple of days. But again, as we talked about, Texas, Louisiana, the most likely landing spot for this, but not expected to be super strong at the moment. We'll keep an eye on it though, lots of days left before this gets toward the Gulf Coast. The current expectation is Tuesday and it's still Friday, so things could change. Going back to the main view here, we're gonna switch now to Tropical Storm Laura uh, to the east, now entering the Eastern Caribbean passing over the Lesser Antilles today. This is the close-up satellite view. There's Puerto Rico on the left, uh, the Virgin Islands and the Lesser Antilles here in the center. And the first question we have to ask when looking at this is where is Laura? And this continues to be a mess. That is the story of this storm so far. The answer to that can be found if you start to assess some of the low level cloud directions here. You'll see very strong easterly wind to the north as you would expect, southeasterly wind here. And then you have to start hunting for stuff to the south. And just before the sun goes down, you can kind of pick out just very light west-northwest flow to the south of St. Kitts here. And that is being confirmed by some surface observations and recon, which has come down here and found light west winds and then the east winds up here, indicating that the center of circulation is somewhere in here near this tiny thunderstorm burst and so that is where we see the center of circulation right now. This is the primary surface wave envelope, and the, the, key, the key here to realize is that this is not just one little weak center too. There's not, there's not really another surface center down here, and you can tell because the wave envelope is evident on this satellite loop as well. If you look at the, the clouds coming out of the due east here, the point where they curve the most is right about here, and that's where the wave axis is. You can see that that's where the wave envelope is if you look closely enough. And so you expect this to be the primary wave right in there with a little bit of a center of low pressure in the middle of that wave envelope. Now, what we see down here to the southeast side is all this thunderstorm activity and the rotation that is associated with the mid-level center. This is not the low-level center. This is the mid-level center, and they are still offset. They are not stacked on top of each other, which is necessary for strong development of a tropical storm like this. 
and this is continuing to hamper uh, the continued organization of Laura, and that will need to change before Laura can intensify significantly. Now, the key is whether these two get too far apart, because what you want if you're trying to get Laura to intensify is for the mid level circulation to continue generating convection that is within this low level wave envelope I've drawn here. You want convection inside the envelope so that it can continue generating vorticity or spin perturbations and convective heating through latent heat release inside the wave that can lower pressures and eventually draw these two together. But there is a point of separation if they get too far apart where that can't happen. And if that is the case, then Laura will struggle to ever develop more than it has already. So there is a knife's edge situation here and minute details could govern Laura's ultimate fate. If we look at the GFS model to start analyzing what the computer thinks about this situation, we have seen some changes today. The first thing to point out is again on the model, you can see here's that wave envelope that we just outlined on satellite imagery and there's the mid-level low that we also outlined on satellite imagery. So the model captures this well. And again, going forward, it's a question of do these align? Now near Puerto Rico, we see that the wave is pretty strong but still offset from the mid-level wave axis, which remains to the southeast. And at this point, wind shear may start to decrease a little bit, and wind shear is what caused these to be misaligned in the first place. So it's possible that at this point, the distance between the two will start to close a little bit. But then there's a new problem in the storm's way, and that is the presence of Hispaniola, very tall mountains that could disrupt the development process of whatever wave or uh, storm is here at the time. Now, on this most recent GFS run, we start to see uh, that it tries to slip just barely north of Hispaniola and allows the mid-level wave and associated green moisture to start stacking on top of the surface wave outlined by this black contour, and they get a little closer together, such that when it's near Cuba and Hispaniola's coastline, they become more vertically aligned. And when that happens, suddenly on the model, we see intensification of a storm that rides the Cuban coastline and tries to intensify on its way toward the Florida Straits. This is a departure from prior runs of the GFS during the last couple of days, which had an open wave here because it did not uh, find a way to stack these on top of each other. So this is a slight trend in the GFS just in this most recent run this afternoon toward uh, the ability for LoRa to start intensifying under this more favorable environment. Remember, during this time, this part of its journey will feature lower shear and probably better moisture content if the two uh, wave axes can become better aligned. And so there is a chance that we see an intensifying storm here, but that depends on A, if the low and mid-level can align, and B, if it's actually over water, because there's a distinct chance that this track, instead of doing this, is just a little bit to the south and does this, and runs the length of Cuba and Hispaniola and has more trouble until it can get into the Gulf of Mexico and be rid of the land in its way. So a lot of wrinkles still in the forecast, but a lot of it depends on whether Laura can uh, start to look a little bit better organized near Puerto Rico and Hispaniola, as we've been talking about over the last couple of days. We can see the same kind of thing happening on the H wharf, where again we start off with the two uh, centers misaligned, but over time the H wharf does see them eventually uh, aligned together, and it does that near the coast of the Dominican Republic, and then we get something similar to the GFS, where we have a strengthening storm, and in the H wharf's case it really likes to strengthen these a whole lot. So we have a strengthening hurricane north of Cuba that then shoots through the Florida Straits and gets into the Gulf of Mexico. You'll note that this track has been gradually shifting south on these model forecasts, where the original track was more into southeast Florida. We've been shifting it a little bit more toward the Florida Straits and or Cuba because Laura has waited quite some time to develop and has not gotten strong in recent hours. And for that reason, it's tracking a little bit more to the south because it hasn't developed much yet. Now we have a new change today also in the model guidance. Until today, mostly the H wharf was the only model showing significant development of LoRa. We now have the GFS showing the potential for more development, and we now also have the European model, which has been very 
has had very damped forecasts for LoRa, showing an open wave during the last four days of model runs. But it initialized LoRa a little bit stronger this morning because the wave has been a little bit stronger than the European expected. And so now we get a chance for the European model to show a little bit of development near Cuba as the storm comes west. And it is interacting with land here, but once it gets into the Gulf, we do in fact see a tropical storm on the model. And so this is now maybe a slight trend in the model guidance favoring this scenario where if LoRa can avoid enough land mass and can get vertically aligned, development is possible because the environment during this part of its journey is rather favorable if it can avoid the land masses. So we are expecting some kind of intensification of LoRa if it can avoid the land mass and get vertically aligned. And that is becoming more of a model consensus this evening. We'll see if that changes. But for now, the official forecast shows that track coming uh, near these land masses, remaining a tropical storm. You can see how close it's going to be here, but we have tropical storm warnings all the way through the Leeward Islands, Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and the northern coast of Hispaniola with tropical storm watches for the Turks and Caicos in southeast Bahamas, and we'll likely see that for Cuba as well in the coming days. Now, again, exactly how strong this is depends on all the things we just talked about. But be prepared regardless, because now as this comes west, if something is left here, uh, if there's a storm of any kind, then it's going to have some time over water in the Gulf of Mexico, most likely given the current expectation. And intensification is probably more likely than weakening if we do get a storm into the Gulf in this kind of upper level pattern. We can actually see this on the GFS if we look at the upper level 200 millibar wind, once we have the storm near Cuba, we have this big upper level ridge here. And this is uh, rather favorable for a storm that gets into the Gulf. This is rather ideal in terms of upper level conditions. Whether the dry air and everything will be ideal, we'll have to see at the time. But as far as the upper level flow, this is favorable. So we have to be ready for the potential for, of a strengthening storm down the road here in a few days, as long as it survives the interaction with the land masses in its way. Now, some of you will ask, what about uh, TD14 getting involved here? You can see on the European model, we do have TD14 near Texas and LoRa here. And this is what we would call a binary interaction between these two vortices where they are within a close enough distance to influence each other, where the northerly flow on this side tries to drag TD14 to the south and TD14's flow tries to swing LoRa up this is a, a wrinkle that is probably best left for later because we. this depends a whole lot on how strong the two storms are relative to each other, how close they are together, and we don't even know for sure that we will have two storms in the Gulf. Uh, this would obviously be kind of a weird thing to have, two storms threatening landfall simultaneously. This has a high degree of uncertainty, and it may throw a wrinkle in the track forecasts for both systems down the road. And so just be aware that some uncertainty remains with the Gulf of Mexico portion of the forecasts, both for LoRa and for TD14. So changes may occur. Just have a plan if you're in the Gulf of Mexico in general. Just have a plan ready to go just in case it is the peak of the hurricane season and be ready for these storms as they approach. And in the Greater Antilles, the greatest threat here by far will be flash flooding in the mountainous terrain as rain will occur near and southeast of Laura, regardless of the winds that the storm brings, which will likely be limited to tropical storm force here, about 40, 45 miles per hour at a maximum. All right, that's it for now. Be safe. Thanks for watching.